Hello, everyone, and welcome back to World Fintech Festival India 2021. Now, the COVID-19 epidemic has uh, accelerated the finance sector digitization. The number of physical interactions has diminished, and the customers are becoming more accustomed to arranging their financial needs online, which has resulted in a shift in customer expectations. Furthermore, fintech and financial firms are beginning to gain full banking licenses. Now, to find out more about uh, these collaborations between fintechs and banks, let's join our panel, which is moderated by Mr. Anupam Verma, Head of International Banking Unit, IFSC Gift City with ICICI Bank. Joining Anupam on this panel are Madhusudan, member of FACE and co-founder and chief executive officer with Credit B, and uh, Todd Schweitzer, chief executive officer with Brankas, and completing this panel is Mr. Mohammad Rushdi, founder of Fintech Bazaar. With that, I hand over the panel to you, Anupam. It's all yours. Thank you, Amit. Good afternoon to all of you. It's a pleasure to be here on World Fintech Festival, which is being conducted in partnership with SFF. I'm Anupam Verma, and I head ICSA Bank's business at IFSC Gift City. IFSC Gift City is India's only international financial center envisioned to be our country's gateway for inbound and outbound capital flows. It is based in Gandhinagar and is akin to foreign jurisdiction on Indian soil. It offers international financial services like foreign currency loan, cross-border trade finance, dollar accounts, and global treasury and wealth solutions. Um, now, I would like to request my esteemed panelists to uh, have to do a quick round of introduction. Can I request Madhusudan followed by Todd, followed by Mamud for a brief intro? Hey everyone. Uh, so good afternoon. This is Madhu. Uh, I am the co-founder, uh, CEO of Credit B. So Credit B is a uh, digital financial platform uh, trying to kind of get the banking products, banking financial services. To the last mile where we kind of basically cater to the last mile of the India uh, in terms of the mid India is what we cater to. Um, we started with our products in terms of digital lending. Um, uh, we're leading with a large scale digital lending in collaboration with many other NBFCs and banks in India. Apart from digital lending, I, you know, so we also do have products in terms of cards and, and many other financial products, what we are trying to kind of uh, 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 get these products to the last mile uh, in, in, in the Indian ecosystem. Happy to part of this uh, uh, panel. Um, just, just a little bit about FACE. FACE is a FinTech Association for Consumer Empowerment. Um, uh, so I'm, I'm one of the co-founders and also the member of that FACE, uh, where it's an industry body uh, representing the FinTech firms, um, at uh, the, the, the voice of the FinTech firms and the consumer, um, dealing with the, the FinTechs to the, the relevant stakeholders uh, and regulators. So that's about me. Um, uh, thanks. Thanks again for having me in this panel. And hi, my name is Todd Schweitzer. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Broncos. And Broncos is a Southeast Asia-based uh, open finance and open banking technology company. Um, and I, uh, we operate across the region, Indonesia, Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, Vietnam. Um, and we've been witness to a lot of collaboration um, and a bit of uh, friction as well uh, between fintechs and traditional banks. And I think this is a wonderful topic because the, the, the technology and the products that are emerging from open banking and open finance are indeed creating new ways for fintechs and traditional banks to collaborate. Um, and I think there's actually, it, it, it's allowing for different models, different commercial models, different ways um, that fintechs um, can 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 add value to banks, um, um, and 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 looking forward to exploring that with our my fellow fellow panelists today. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mohammed Rudi. I'm a founder of FinTech Bazaar, and as well, I'm a member of Arab Monetary Fund um, uh, FinTech Worker Group. Uh, I've been working in the financial services and banking and technology for more than 25 years here in the Middle East. Um, uh, last few years, I've been focusing in fintechs and collaboration. Uh, fintech Bazaar as well plays a role between banks and uh, fintechs and investors uh, and the regulators as well to bring all this in, in, in one panel to collaborate. So the fintech bazaar itself from the name is like a bazaar or, or a marketplace, which bring all the innovation, you know, and and, and, and banks as well. Uh, I think it's very interesting to discuss today the 
collaboration role because I think this is the way forward. Uh, and, uh, you know, like we have seen now, you know, a few years back or like uh, recently, we have seen very good examples happening around us for the collaboration. And I think this is great for the consumer and for the ecosystem itself. Thank you. We're very glad to be here with other panelists. Thank you. Uh, now moving to the interesting topic that we have today. Uh, banks have their strengths, large customer base, strong brand, and diverse funding. Fintechs bring new ideas, cutting edge analytics, agile implementation, and a unique user experience. The partnership between bank and fintechs can actually provide to the customers best of both the worlds. So as you see, we have a very diverse panel today to discuss this, both in terms of the business model that they have, as well as the geography which they represent. So I'm looking forward to this very, very engaging uh, discussion. So let's double click right away. Uh, starting with you, Madhusudan, uh, is the old debate on whether FinTech and banks are in the same playing 11 or they're in the competing team, is it still relevant? How are you seeing banks and FinTech coexist in today's financial landscape? Thanks. Uh, thanks, Anupam. It's a very interesting topic, right? So um, I think, I think uh, uh, good that, you know, the, the questions have evolved uh, what has been posed to us fintech players, you know, so the first question always I was asked about four or five years back was, is fintech a bubble and is, is digital lending specifically within the fintech field, is that a bubble that's going to burst? Um, uh, and then suddenly we saw a, a, a great confidence on the fintechs. And then the next question was, is fintechs a challenges to banks? Are, are fintechs going to replace banks was the next shift. Uh, I think these were some of the extreme questions. What, what we had, uh, we as a, uh, founders of uh, fintech uh, companies had to answer a little while ago, but but I guess I guess we have kind of uh, hit a middle ground. Um, uh, so I think today today where we have reached our consensus is that um, the fintechs and banks are are bound to coexist. Um, uh, so uh, so that that's been uh, said. I, I guess I guess there's a different thing what the banks and the fintechs uh, bring onto the table. As you mentioned, you know so. Uh, the, the banks come with a lot of uh, legacy, the, the the DNA, because these are the institutions that have been kind of operating, existing in the in the Indian ecosystem, and of course it should be the true uh, uh, in other places as well for for many years. Um, uh, so the structures, the branch based model, the physical presence based models have been one of the key DNAs of the banks. Uh, while what has fintechs gotten on the table is the agility, uh, right? So the agility with which they can offer the banking products to the customers, um, uh, right? So, and, and, and that agility is what has made everyone to rethink about the way the, the products can be offered, the, the same banking products can be offered to the customers, right? So um, if I look at an Indian ecosystem uh, with, with the banks, I think, you know, a good notch of banks are kind of uh, very well automated. They are, they are very much invested in the technology and whatnot, but, um, and also they're continuously improving on the, on the automation levels as well, right? So the difference, what, what FinTech has brought in has helped to reimagine the way banking services are delivered to the end customers. I think, I think that's the key difference what FinTechs have brought into these set of banks. While, while having said that, India has a different set of banks where the, the technology ability itself is kind of lacking um, because of the kind of operations they were dealing with. So therefore, it's a, it's a very easy uh, collaboration in terms of just adding a tech layer um, on top of their banking products has also kind of um, really added a lot of value to these, uh, uh, to these banks, uh, right? So, I mean, I mean, for me in India, it's, it's lending, um, the digital lending or, or payments have, have really kind of scaled up to an extent um, while these services were always there in India, uh, but but with the new fintech offerings, the way it has scaled uh, can really be the examples of how fintechs and banks can collaborate, co-work together in offering a similar products in a very different way, um, which makes a lot of sense to the end consumers. So that's that's what has been uh, today. Uh, what I feel about the banks and fintechs coexisting, um, uh, that that we can enrich the value of the customers uh, in the way these products are offered. Yeah, I agree. Todd, what's your take on this? Is it a zero-sum game? Definitely not zero-sum. I think there is a perception among some of the, uh, um, I will say, the more traditional institutions that often have a very, very strong balance sheet and a very stable business in kind of the current state. And so therefore, they may see uh, fintech 
uh, partnering with fintechs is somehow cannibalizing a core business. Um, that is the perception, though. I do not think that is reality. In fact, I think even the more traditional banks can can have the most to gain from partnering with fintechs. Um, that, as as Madhu pointed out, can can offer complementary values. I think Madhu talked a bit about um, changing how uh, financial products are delivered to the customer. I mean, my I, I, so that's correct, and I would I would add a bit more of a I would I would I would share kind of my my frame of how I think about this. I think the when a fintech and a, a bank partner they can change the way financial products are developed because actually rather than the bank building a new app or user interface or a new stringing together different products and workflows they can actually provide apis to the fintech and the fintech can build that on behalf of the bank right um now, ip ownership is a different thing but suffice it to say it doesn't need to be a bank you know product per se where they can provide the infrastructure number two as Madhu rightly says, it, it, it can change the way uh, financial products are distributed um, so that, for example, the bank is not running around with agents or with branches trying to onboard the next generation of customers because the fintechs can onboard customers into bank products through the fintech app. Um, but I think the third component is sort of the... The, uh, the biggest one, because it's the commercial component, which is it changes the way that financial of services can be monetized because it allows banks to look at subscription-based models, platform revenue, um, uh, even monetizing customer data or customer KYC so that they can offer kind of proxy, proxy authentication and KYC. So there's all sorts of new revenue streams that can be unlocked when banks, um, you know, consider kind of with open eyes how to partner with fintechs. Yeah, I agree. As you know, I'll have to double hat here because I'm the only banker on the bank. So I would fully agree with what you said. Uh, I think it allows bank to experiment with new business model, which was earlier not viable in the brick and mortar uh, world. At the same time, you know, your time to market improves. Uh, engaging with fintech also has a rub-on effect on the culture of the of the teams on the bank that you're working with. So they are there are definitely a lot of plus points. Uh, Mahmood, coming to that, uh, coming to you, uh, how do you think banks and fintech should approach a partnership, and what challenges do you see both parties face as they move ahead on the partnership? Hey, thank you for the question, Anwar. You know, I think it's like uh, very important. You know, the approach of the partnership. You know, um, as we've been speaking and talking, uh, and my colleagues said, it's not a zero-sum game anymore. You know, it's 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 you know a partnership, but everyone. They should go by partnership like it's a win-win at the end of the day. It's not something which is a bank and big and you are a fintech, you are small. It's not like this at all. The point here, everyone would play a role and everyone can make a great thing happening to the ecosystem, to the consumer, at it to the bank or to, you know, to both of them. So the partnership here should be based on each and every one capabilities. People should, or banks in particular, should know that this nimble, this new fintech, this new companies or whatever, and innovators, these guys can deliver a value. And this value, it will take us really a longer time to do it. And even we need to change the mindset, many things we have to do. So it means that like we have to collaborate with each other and we're able really to bring a more value to our businesses by having these people on board with us. So that the point here, it's, there's a mind mindset shifting and uh, you know it's an important thing here that banks mainly realize that this is you know it's it's a very good to have to, to concentrate and focus in your core businesses banking and your back office we talk about funding you know they have been lots of great things happening on the banking but while there's other areas people can complement to do it much much better than us like the front end as we said you know my please talk about the fintech app or the you know whatever new bank whatever you call it so this area, someone else can do it better than us or, or can help us to do it even better for our customers. There are many, many, many different forms, even white labeling or collaborating. There's many ways. So bringing these people on board will make a, a better value for us. So it's a win-win, I would say. And everybody knows where is their, their strength and their weaknesses. And that's why you are bringing the other party to, you know, to, to help us or, you know, to complement us, to complement our offering. The, you know, the, the issue here, which is we face here, you can see from the two parties, there is, you know, 
there is a speed, I would say, there is a speed factor here. You find, uh, you know, fintechs, they are very, very fast. They are very nimble. The guys they don't come with any background of what we call uh, risk compliance and all this. You know, I come from banking background as well. If you want to do a product, you know, you, you think 100 times about risk compliance, you know, audit and, and many things you think about it before, you know, get the product up, up and running. But while these guys come from fintech, they come with a fresh mind. They want to get the customer, what the customer needs, what the customer issues. You work on it very fast. You're able to develop it faster than, you know, when you are in banking. So you can see here there is a speed, I would say, uh, you know, factor is different. These guys are, are, are so fast because you don't think about many things happening in the banking. You need to get the two culture married together. You know, that's an issue here. As other thing, banks as well, which is your right, they want also when you want to collaborate. They want to make sure they get the right partner because banks, they have a big, I would say, you know, a, a reputation issue, a, a name, a brand, and so on. So they have to, they, they want to make sure really they are getting, and this guy is still new, uh, they are small, you know, they might maybe fail at the time. It's okay, it's no, 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 no issue with failing, but banks are very, you know, selective when it comes to, you know, partner with with small firms or whatever so these things which is a culture i would say and the ecosystem itself need to be you know to be think thought of i think accelerator which we're having in many different places does help a big time people go in these accelerators they work with banks they make sure that this fintechs are really you know able to 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 live for a long time the idea is great and so on and we could see that this collaboration happening in accelerator between banks and fintechs and uh, many people they endorse this kind of fintechs and they, they see that the partner behind them behind it and they're able really to bring something to the table to banks and then it goes so it's, i think that this is a, the kind of uh, of challenges we are facing here for the collaboration. I know that it happens like the bank can see maybe 100 fintechs to collaborate with one or two. And some of the fintechs, they, 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 they sometimes, you know, like, you know, they said, okay, what's happening? Why does it take time? Why we go all this? But, you know, as I said, banking, they need also to preserve their position. They make sure that they are getting the right people to, to collaborate with. I think this is one of the things which is happening or the, you know, the challenge which will happen here in the collaboration mode. Um, maybe later on we're going to see banks also acquiring fintechs you know it might happen it doesn't happen yet but it's i think that the, the collaboration happening maybe it would lead later on to acquisition or something like that but uh, i believe you know the great thing happening around us it's happening we see few you know i would say it's few but hope it will be more in the future thank you sure thank you thank you um madhu coming to you um what challenges both banks and fintechs need to overcome to win as a team? And, and um, how do you measure the, the success of the partnership and over what time frame? Yeah, uh, so it's a very uh, kind of a, a pressing question here, uh, Anupam, uh, because, you know, so as, as Mohamed was pointing it out, um, I guess what happens with the, the, when you start the partnership with a bank for a fintech is, is it takes a lot of time before the bank really open up um, it's balance sheets, it's the entire set of its APIs, core APIs and whatnot, because um, uh, very rightly, Mohamed pointed out that the banks have a reputation issue. And uh, of course, the fintech companies are kind of in a urgency to, to uh, basically offer their services and products, um, which banks are scared of in terms of uh, 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 hit to its reputation in case if things goes bad. Um, so with this, I guess uh, what, what I have traditionally seen or what I've seen in the last three, four years is that Initially, um, uh, a bank and a fintech collaboration would start with a very small level of partnership and, and both the sides would test it out. And when the comfort is built, then they, the bank would uh, increase its exposure in terms of the balance sheet or the APIs, right? So, uh, and, and therefore that time is kind of a little bit um, uh, uh, coming shorter and shorter, but, but I would still say that um, it's not um, all the, uh, I mean, you don't get a uniform treatment for any fintech which would come to a bank and then ask for a set of APIs and the bank would open it. That, that does not happen here. One needs to have patience. One needs to devote time in building these partnerships. So in that way, uh, one of the key challenges is uh, the fintech has to be right in terms of selecting the right bank to partner with. And also the banks also cannot just go with every other fintech. So therefore they have to kind of choose the, the right fintech to partnership with, right? So I think, I think that combination is what is taking to uh, the product offering to a greater success. You know, that's, that's one point. 
second point what i what we kind of have to bring also look at and understand here is the the regulatory uh, framework around such partnerships uh, right so the regulator also has to kind of make it more easy easy to for these partnerships right so, so there are a lot of unsaid rules there are kind of things which are interpreted differently or there are certain rules which are um, the policies which don't speak about certain partnerships so that puts um, most of us thinking whether you know whether such collaborations could be done or not uh, right so so therefore there is a, a regulatory sandbox approach that is required in terms of trying out these new partnerships where there is a sufficient comfort even for the bank to expose some of the services uh, to the fintech so therefore the regulator also has to kind of take such views especially in a uh, in a country like india where where we have a uh, i i mean uh, you know uh, the both the regulatory wise and the banks wise i think we always take the most conservative um, approach in terms of interpretation of our policies uh, i think that's what our lawyers do here in india so in that way you know unless until the there is a certain sandbox approaches where the experimentations can be done uh, under the purview of regulator would would make it uh, a lot more sense for us to kind of um uh, take this offerings in a much better way yeah so so i mean i mean just to kind of wrap it up i guess um it's been a patience game in terms of looking at the success of a partnership between a fintech and a bank uh, it wouldn't work that a bank goes with every other fintech or a fintech goes with every other bank that that would work in terms of the effort that has to be put in finding a right partner is is also very meaningful and of course you know so there should be a, a regulatory support which can accelerate these partnerships uh, in future uh, is is really going to uh measure the success in a much smaller time frames is what i believe uh, anupam so as they say think big start small yeah. and if it works out scale it fast <laughs> so coming to todd uh, todd what's your approach to partnership and would it be would it differ if you are dealing with a global bank versus a local local bank or a fintech uh, so as a fintech that would like to work with as many financial institutions as possible i will not badmouth anyone um but uh with that caveat aside i think um the benefit of more and more fintech partnerships of an open finance economy means that uh you can as a fintech you can partner with an F a financial institution even if they do not have a brick and mortar presence in every nook and cranny of the country um which is another way of saying i think it is a way to it, what excites me in working with in partnering with banks is this is enabling some of the smaller or regional or or or, or kind of uh, niche players to punch above their weight where they are excellent in a particular area but they're hindered because they don't necessarily have physical presence right um so that could be a rural bank that could be a thrift bank or a specialist bank that's focusing on a particular segment um or a particular set of products and enabling them to offer what they do best over digital channels to a much larger customer base and all of a sudden they can compete with the 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 national banks that have that have physical branch presence or atm presence and uh, across across the whole geography right so i think um It, and and also they don't you know smaller banks will not necessarily have the IT resources so as long as they have a leadership mentality that is um pro partnership um then actually there there some of the the friction with larger banks around make versus buy or or the IT team saying no 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 that's in our 3 year you know development road map those prob problems don't exist uh for a smaller bank that is just um doesn't have that budget to begin with um so um you know that and, and uh, look i'm i i live in southeast asia but i'm american so i've seen the i've seen the likes of uh cross river and first community federal bank which is a small thrift bank in new jersey which is now powering like every transferwise wallet in usd right so like these are the examples to me that come to mind these these banking as a service institutions which are really there is no way they'd be able to offer this a on their own or b with the branch presence they have today so i think of course you know we all want to partner with a global bank or an or kind of a national leader and and you know there are some i think that that deserve a lot of credit for being forward moving despite their market position 
but I think that if there's, as a general rule of thumb, I think um, if you can find a local or a, a, even a regional bank that has the right mentality, that knows that they can play a different game by partnering with fintechs, then that usually is 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 a is a winning recipe for for building something uh, interesting in fintech. Interesting. Madhu, coming to you, any uh, successful partnership that you would like to talk about? And looking back, what worked? Oh yeah, I guess uh, I guess a lot of partnership, right? So um, uh, end of the day, uh, there are, there's, there's the multiple uh, level at which we partner with the banks. Um, uh, so one is uh, uh, definitely there's we we had an um, NBFC as well. So therefore, we borrow from banks. Uh, so there's a multiple banks which has extended a lot of credit to us. Um, so that's that's part A. The part B is in terms of the banking um, uh, uh, services, in terms of escrow accounts, in terms of APIs. Um, the, the IMPS integrations and whatnot. So that's the second set of integrations in terms of the banking services or banking API integration, uh, what we deal with. And, uh, and, and probably the last part is on the, the equity, uh, right? So, I mean, I mean, ICIC Bank has been one of our uh, equity partners as well. So, so there are multiple uh, um, uh, facets with which uh, we have worked together and, and, and we have got a lot of success. Um, uh, one, one very recent thing, which just because it's very recent. So I just want to highlight was, um, we started thinking of a story on the BNPL where we launched our credit B card product. And this product was launched, um, let's say in association with RBL. Um, so I still remember the initial discussions with RBL when we went, uh, probably in about like, um, uh, March or April timeline of this year, uh, that was our first ever discussion with, uh, RBL. So RBL was like, you know, so will you guys, I mean, I mean, there's, there's a huge distribution problem in terms of distributing the, the cards that kind of works as a credit card or works as a debit card. Uh, so the distribution is a major challenge. Of course, we have seen fintechs doing a lot of wonders in many other facets, but can you distribute the cards in the similar way? Uh, so while we did give a certain projections and that was kind of very, uh, uh, was looking like a very far-fetched numbers for, for the bank at that time, but um, we, they, they believed in us and then we started this integration and launched the product in August and, and believe it or not, like last month we did about a, a 120K cards was issued uh, in cooperation with, uh, with, with RBL. You know, so that was a very significant number in a three month span um, in which we launched this product, right? So, so therefore, um, uh, uh, therefore that was one of the things that where the bank extended a lot of support in terms of offering this product. I mean, it's, although it looks like it's a very, um, uh, on the, on the, on the front end side to the customer, it looks like a very simple rosy picture, but in the back end, there's a, a massive work that has gone in, 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 in making that product, uh, so easily available, but what this has proven to both the, both for a FinTech like us and the bank is that as long as we put in enough effort and then we find a product market fit, um, you know, the scale is just a number that one has to kind of track and there's always success around that. Right. So I think this is the most recent thing what happened. And therefore, um, that was one of the successful, uh, uh a partnership, what I would call it, uh, at this stage. Yeah. Yeah. Good to know. Um, I think last five minutes, Todd, any success you would like to talk about? Well, I think, um, so what, one is, I think, uh, there in the gym, our rule of thumb approaching a bank for a partnership is always to start with the obvious win, even if it's not the big, huge, the big, huge win that you'd really like, right? And when I say win, I mean a win for the bank and for the fintech. And the reason is it will be hot. The biggest effort, and I imagine everyone has been through this, the biggest effort will be going from zero to one in working with the bank, right? product or, fee or product or partnership or feature that developed two through N is going to be a lot easier once you've made it past the, um, the, 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 the risk management team, the compliance, the IT security, the network access, all those teams that require kind of approval and vetting in order to, to actually plug in for the first time, right? So I think the, the simplest you can start, even if it seems dead simple for you, a FinTech, um, Trust me, it will be a, a heavy lift and a big win internally if your champion on the bank side is able to, when your champion on the bank side is able to get it through. Um, no, and I think for us, it's, it's it, I mean, so again, we operate in Southeast Asia, so we don't yet have UPI, but there's, an, there's, a, there's um, 
um, a lot of momentum in just basic domestic, you know, domestic uh, uh, retail payments to allow customers to do a direct bank transfer in order to check out at e-commerce or to top up their wallet um, without needing to go through an intermediary or without needing to deposit cash at a branch or open a bank app and push the funds and wait for it to process, right? It's super simple, right? Um, but really in, in a market like Indonesia or the Philippines, there's really only two, two or three banks that do it in a at scale in a way that allows fintechs to easily plug in. And so just working as a distributor where we have a master license agreement with the bank, we take on some of the liability for the, the users, who we, which we would need to do anyway. And then we act as basically onboarding partners and we sub-license our access to the API to a third party. That's a way, it, it sounds like a very administrative thing, but it's actually a, a, a great way to fast track um, distribution for the bank. So they're seeing the transaction volumes, we're seeing the transaction volumes. The corporate clients that are using the APIs are thrilled because they now have can offer direct bank transfers to their customers. Um, but it required a bit of, of a, I would say a counterintuitive approach um, where you're you're solving for what is the fastest way to get a version one live, even if it's, even if it administratively looks like not the, um, the, the, the way you would have done it in a, in a vacuum, I should say. Yeah, I agree. And you know, since you talked about UPI, when we look at successes in India, I think the first phase of partnerships between bank and, and fintechs in India came around UPI and then followed by digital lending where a lot of work has happened. Um, um, Mohammed, uh, you know, uh, according to you, what are the new areas where banks will partner with fintechs going forward in any Last thoughts on that? Yeah, thank you. You know, like I think uh, my colleagues talk about uh, interesting parts, which is I think the distribution of channel was a big thing in the beginning. And I would say that most of the fintechs came in the payment and accounts, you know, or payment, you know, because I think maybe this was an interesting area. And now, you know, if you look at the strength of banks, is the liquidity, is money, actually. I mean, even we could see the peer-to-peer -peer finance or crowdfunding platforms here in the region. I saw at some use cases, when they try to finance SMEs, they have more SMEs asking for finance more than the flow of money coming from a consumer investor like me and you and other people. So who gives the money even in this platform is banks. You know, banks start coming in as an investor in this platform, peer-to-peer -peer finance. So I would say, you know, that, you know, we started and FinTech started in payment and channels. It's a great thing happening. But consume, the, the companies and people, they need financing. If you need financing, it means you need money. If you need money, it means if a fintech or a new bank, you need to, to lend. It means they have to take deposits and then later on they are able to finance. You know, they have to be a big bank really, which has never happened. You know, it will take time to reach this, uh, this stage. So what's happening is banks is, 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 you know, financing platforms, credit, uh, you know, and all of these, I think banking, is playing a big role here. So the platform come from fintechs, while the, the, the financing and the money and the liquidity, everything come from banks. So I believe the financing part, uh, you know, it's especially for SMEs because, you know, consumer has taken really a big time, I would say, from fintech. You know, most of fintechs and most of them, a big time, you know, percentage are all in, in consumer. But SMEs, uh, you know, and the small and medium enterprise, you know, companies, this really lagging and behind. So I would say that in SMEs and in financing part, this is the two areas really, which is we can see more uh, more needs for banking and more needs for fintechs. So fintechs come with a platform, agile, nimble, it's very easy, quick and great ideas. And while banking can bring the finance and the, you know, the strength. So I would say this is the area and the part really, which I would say, it start happening and we hope to see so more from it in, in, in the near future. With open banking come in place, I think we facil facilitate all of this kind of uh, products. Thank you. Yeah, you're right. I think SME is an uh, area where you'll see a lot of collaboration going forward. And let me quickly double hat here also because I'm the only banker in, on, on this panel. So, yeah. uh, you know, let me just add that, you know, uh, while we talked about uh, payment and lending, I think there are a couple of areas where we'll see co collaboration going forward, uh, specifically with, when we talk about India. India is moving from a data scarce to a data rich nation, and that has huge implication for financial services. So I believe 
there will be a lot of collaboration about hyper personalization uh, you know uh, and uh, using all kind of data whether it's financial data alternate data to get a full 60 degree view of the customer i think that's where i believe some work will happen going forward uh, also i think during the pandemic uh consumption of digital services has really skyrocketed so you will see collaboration between banks and fintechs around what we call the ecosystem super apps where the banking uh, will be embedded and the last area i think uh, you know uh, we will also see much more collaboration around gamification i think that's one area where we have not seen much collaboration till now i think gamification of financial services being used for um, you know uh, reinforcing behavior Uh, for savings and so on and so forth we'll see some more work around that um, another area i believe you know india is a multilingual country so there will be more and more collaboration around how banks and fintechs will create um, you know voice ai solutions which can be used uh, in a in a country like india uh, across different languages i think I there think is another like... one which is you know a big and massive maybe it needs another maybe a full uh, you know uh, you know panel is the blockchain yes. and crypto you know if you talk about blockchain and crypto and how because this will happen really with fintech will be coming to banks this is a big area still regulation in some countries yes and no so if you talk about blockchain and crypto world i think this is lots of collaboration will happen between banks and fintech but this is an early you know i would say it will take some time because of regulation and lots of things happening as well in this space so this is another area i would i would expect to happen over the next few years yeah that's right that's right uh, with this um, we have come to the end of the panel discussion i think we all agree that in terms of the collaboration between banks and fintech uh, the mindset as todd talked about is very very important leadership mindset and both the organizations customer fund first mindset and the mindset that you don't need to build everything your, on your own you can actually partner and uh, collaborate to bring the best solutions to the customer um thanks a lot uh, i would like to thank all my panelists for a very very engaging discussion and very insightful discussion thank you th th thanks a lot thank you thank you thank you, thank you very much uh, anupam and uh, big thanks to all our panelists Uh, they took time out from their busy schedules today uh, so once again thanks a lot and it has been a wonderful uh, session and very informative discussion for that matter and to our viewers now it's time for us to move on to our next session of the day do not forget to refresh your web browsers and we will be stopping here for a quick 15 minute break we'll see you in some time thank you <laughs>